H E E N T or head, eye, ear, nose, and throat exam is usually the initial part of a general physical examination after doing the vital signs. Like the other parts of the physical exam, it begins with inspection and then proceeds to palpation. In doing the examination of the head and neck, it requires the use of several special instruments to inspect the eyes and ears and special techniques to assess their special sensory function. As is the case with many different exam components, we must first use our eyes to assess for any obvious findings. Some questions to ponder are, what is the general appliance of the patient? Does their face have symmetry and facial drooping? Are there any stark findings such as ptosis or a goiter? As for the sinus palpation, apply pressure to the patient's sinuses in order to assess for any pain. Pain can suggest a possible underlying infection for the frontal, ethmoid, and maxillary. For the external inspection, all components of the eyes that are externally visible should be inspected. Look out for jaundice, bleeding, infection, inflammation, and really anything that is out of the ordinary. Also check for red reflex. This is done by using a thalmoscope to shine the light in a patient's eyes and visualize the red reflex in both eyes. The wrong color in this reflex can indicate serious conditions. Finally, during the Fundus exam, using an ophthalmoscope, one can look at the structures in the back of the eye. Realistically, this is very difficult to do properly, especially without dilating the patient and other instruments are better suited for this procedure, an ophthalmology consult should be called in many situations for further investigation of the fundus. The ear examination. Foremost, hearing test. Oftentimes, a bilateral finger rubbing test is used to screen for hearing loss. Use tuning forks to assess cranial nerve 8 for both the air conduction and bone conduction. To conduct the external inspection, when moving on to the ear component of the exam, begin again with the general inspection. Without using an otoscope, you should be able to observe the auricle and the external auditory canal. While we may take for granted that the external anatomy of the ear will often be normal, in some cases, underlying diseases will be present with findings in this region. Infection and even shingles can be observed in this component of the exam. Finally, otoscopic examination. Using an otoscope, we can be able to observe the internal structures of the ear. Some basic tips for using the otoscope would include hold the scope near the head, Pull back on the ear you are examining with the hand that is not holding the otoscope in order to straighten the ear canal. Embrace your pinky against the patient's skull to avoid rapid movements that will cause the scope to go too deep into the canal. There are a variety of different findings that can be observed. However, we are generally looking to see a non-diseased ear canal and intact tympanic membrane. The subclassification of exam components such as the oral cavity are not worth stressing over. Does it go under head versus throat? With this in mind, it is more important to consider how inspection of the oral cavity will fit into your exam flow. As for the external inspection of the mouth, note of whether there are lips cracked, any external findings, and make sure to ask the patient more about any finding and properly characterize it. For the inspection of the oral cavity, visually, we can look for any abnormal findings within the oral cavity. Make sure to look behind the lips and under the tongue as well. Okay. Neck examination. Beginning initially with inspection, we can also palpate any abnormal findings we come across. Lymph nodes are one example of structures we want to palpate, even if nothing is seen visibly. We are looking to find any unusual manifestations like enlarged size, abnormal feel or rigidity or even pain. As for the thyroid test, 
while realistically an ultrasound and further imaging will be more informative. You can palpate the thyroid in the following manner. First, stand behind the patient. This can make the maneuver less awkward. Secondly, feel for the Adam's apple or the laryngeal prominence with both fingers. Third is to move your fingers down and feel for any cartilaginous notch that is part of the cricoid cartilage. Fourth is to move your fingers below this point and feel for the first pharyngeal cartilage arc. The connection between the sides of the thyroid are below this level. Move your hands right below this arc and do not push down here because this is very uncomfortable for the patient. Finally, move your hands slightly to the sides of this location, the location of the thyroid lobes, and have the patient swallow while you apply gentle pressure. Overall, as the acronym suggests, the HEENT exam has a few major components. First is the inspection, palpation, and testing of cranial nerves of the head. Also, the inspection of the eyes, inspection and hearing tests of cranial nerves of the ears, together with the inspection of the nose, as well as the inspection and palpation of the throat.